Hey guys, so I just wanted to do a video that kind of goes over my first week impressions and experiences with the new bird. And as you can see, she's already in playful mode. <clears throat> this is one of her favorite toys. It's like a little squeaky dog toy. But, um, I told you guys I would do a video like that. And I want to try to do this periodically, like maybe the first week, first month, first three months. And now that I've had some experience with other toucans and Ripley when she was a baby, it's easier for me to kind of assess and compare the two. And personality differences, difference with species, and things like that. So, one of the first things I did notice with her is she seems a lot more daring. And, don't drop that. Careful. Um, adventurous, like more brave than Ripley was. Like when I got Ripley as a baby, it took her, it took her a good week before she started really moving much in the house. Like she was really nervous. She didn't really want to go very far. Like she just kind of wanted to sit there. It was really. You take that for? Yeah. You want it? You want it back? No? Okay. How about a blueberry? You want one of those? Yeah, that's what I thought. Anyways, as I was saying, it took Ripley quite a while before she was comfortable with exploring and um, exercising her curiosity and stuff. Maeve wasn't, isn't, hasn't been like that at all. She's immediately, pretty much, as soon as I got her, exploring and testing her limits. And this is really that time in their life where they're testing their limits and their abilities and strengths and stuff. So that's why I've been giving her a little more leeway. And especially with like Tupac, she needs to be able to develop her social skills with other toucans and uh, be able to socialize with people and things like that and see how far she can go and what she can get away with before I get mad or he gets mad because that's kind of just how they develop their social structures and their flocks. So, I want to keep that as close as I can. Ugh, you want that again? Here. As close as I can to like their experiences in the wild with other birds, because that's how they develop their little minds. So, they're very social animals, as you can see, they're very playful. Two fox over here. He's sitting in his no normal, usual spot. So every once in a while, she'll kind of come over and explore and uh, try to, I don't know, play with him. I don't know what she's doing. Really, she's just pissing him off, but he's, he's patient with her, and that's a good thing. I think he can tell that she's an adolescent. Oh, you're back to jumping on phones again, aren't you? Go back down here, and I'll give you some food. Ready? Look. Good bird. So, um, she's been mainly, ca mostly cage free for a while. Like when I first, you got some, like, you got some food on your beak. You dropped it. When I first got her here, um, she was in a cage, like, for sleeping and stuff. And then, of course, when, okay. <laughs> Of course, when I leave the house, she goes into an enclosure, but for the most part, she's been sleeping, 
She's been sleeping in my room with Tupac and I, outside of the cage. And, okay. Look, do you want another blueberry? Look. Come here. There you go. Go back down. Um, anyway, she's been out of the cage probably 95% of the time. Tupac's out of his... I mean, Tupac's probably out of his enclosure probably 98% of the time because he's just so calm and chill. But the only time I'll ever put him into an enclosure is when I leave the house just for their safety so they don't eat or get into anything that might potentially hurt them. Um, I keep an eye on them when they're out here, so that's a good thing. And she's just... Okay. Starting this again. I know she thinks I'm talking to her. But, um, as you can see, she's very energetic. Um, very, very typical of Toucans. She's not much different as far as that goes. When Ripley was comfortable with her environment, she was very energetic too. But she definitely seems a lot more inquisitive than, <laughs> than Ripley was. And, what? Here, you want a blueberry? You want another one? Come here. There you go. Very fast. And a nuisance sometimes. She still doesn't quite know where she should and should not go to the bathroom, for instance, which can be very frustrating. <laughs> so, like, last night, I was putting her to bed, and as I was getting ready for bed, she landed on me, immediately pooped, and then flew off. Or I had to get her off of me. And I was like, oh, great. So then I had to go change clothes and everything because I had freaking crap all over my shirt. And that's what I was going to sleep in. So, and I had to wipe it off my shoulder because she got it on my shoulder. Okay. <laughs> go play with your toys. Come on. And then uh, I went and changed and came back and then she flew over to the bed and then threw up a blueberry and just left it there and flew back off. So, you know, she's not, she doesn't really have manners quite yet. <laughs> so, and that's fine. Like she, yeah, she's about to freaking crap right there on the blanket. That's why those blankets are there. So I can easily clean, uh, wipe the poop off and then, you know, every day or two I throw the blankets in the washing machine. And until she kind of gets used to knowing where she is and is not supposed to go to the bathroom. Come on. Um, it's easier to clean up. It doesn't get on the furniture, that sort of thing. So, like, Ripley was pretty much potty trained. They seem to have some sort of instinct to know where to go. So, um, after they've... I, I, like, they seem to communicate a lot. I mean, all birds kind of do this, but a lot with body language, with noises. And with Ripley, I didn't really necessarily, like, go out of my way to train her, to potty train her. And the same with Tupac. They, she just kind of knew, like, after a while where she should and should not go. She had specific places she would go, and then she wouldn't ever go on me. She wouldn't go on the furniture. She would go on her two or three perches that I had set up. And that was it. So, she'll get there eventually. And Tupac's like that now, where he only really goes in his little spot over there. And he's been good. But when I first got him, he didn't quite know where to go yet, and that's fine. And, uh, you know, they're birds. You kind of, you, if you get a bird, you kind of expect it to crap on you or on the floor or wherever at some point. I mean, if you get a bird and you expect that not to happen, you're going to have a really bad time. So... So it's not that big of a deal. It's just kind of frustrating because I'm not used to having to deal with that. It's been such a uh, a while since I've had a baby, a baby toucan specifically, because toucans are all over the place, as you can see. They don't sit still, and she's pretty much like this from the moment she wakes up to when she goes to sleep. And when she goes to sleep, it's just like it's not even like a. You want this? Look. When she goes to sleep, it's not even like a gradual process. It's just like you look over and she's asleep. <laughs> she's like all over the walls, and then you look over and she's curled up into a little ball sleeping. So, but she's been a very good bird. She's very, 
I, like she she'll come to you just on her own like if I put my arm out she'll hop she'll fly over to me across the house if I put my arm out and she'll follow me around still like she'll follow me into the bathroom or into the laundry room or wherever I go so in that sense like Ripley never really did any of that sometimes I had to chase her around so she's she's and she's taught herself how to do all that stuff so she's very she's a very intelligent bird Okay, yeah, go ahead and pretend like you're killing that thing. So, yeah, and as you guys have seen a lot, they don't play with normal bird toys. They they like cat toys and dog toys, so. Look, you want this? You like caps? She was trying to bring this to Tupac last night. And he was like, eh, not interested. And she's getting nice little red feathers under her little breast area there, or throat area. So, she's growing quickly, and I want to do all these videos before that baby time is gone. So, <laughs> it's going to happen fast. I'll probably do I'll probably do a video pretty soon on her noises that she makes that you guys are hearing. Cuz they only do that for a few months while they're fledglings and then you know, that's that's it. They do their adult noises. And she's already starting to do a lot of her adult noises. So she's growing very quickly, like a little weed. And she's actually surprisingly cuddly, especially for the little amount of time that she's known me. Are you, Do you want food? That's not food. What is that? That looks like a blueberry that you threw up at some point and left on the floor. Here, here's a fresh one. Oh, man. So, anyways, yeah, everything's been great. Like, her... I don't know. She's just... She's a good bird. She she has the, you know, the terrible toddler phase of birds and babies where you kind of have to put up with some of their crap, pun intended. But she'll grow out of that, and I think she's going to be a really fantastic bird when she gets older. And, you know, she's kind of growing into her own right now and learning about her environment and who she's sharing her space with, and who's in her flock, and where she belongs in her pecking order, and things like that, and that's a good thing. So, she's she's fit in here quite naturally, and of course we're all very excited to, or I'm very excited to continue showing you how she's growing and developing and learning, and it's helped me a lot to have some insight having other toucans now, to kind of be able to tell the difference between how a baby is and how an adult is and the difference between the two species and things like that. Like, she looks very small right now, and she is very small, but one day she will be pretty close to the size of Tupac. But Tupac, Tupac's a pretty big toucan, even for a Toko toucan. Toko toucans are the largest of the toucans and also the largest of the entire order of Pisiforms, so which includes woodpeckers and barbettes and all that good stuff. So, red-billed toucans are like the second, the second largest. So she'll get pretty, no, don't play with that. I need to clean that up. And as you guys can tell from the last video, it's pretty exhausting trying to chase her around all day. So, whew. But it's also rewarding. And it won't always be like that. I just want to make sure she doesn't hurt herself by accident. So I want her to be able to explore her surroundings safely and learn about them. And then once she kind of, once she learns about everything and who everybody is and is properly socialized, then she'll be, she'll be great. So anyways, um, hope that was informative to you guys. Here, you want another blueberry? Here. You gotta you be so violent about it, jeez. There you go. Want another one? We'll give a we'll give you a blueberry from all our patrons. How about that? Oh, you dropped half of it in here. Maybe I should start doing that. Maybe I should start when we get a new patron. We'll give the birds a blueberry from our patrons when we get them on on Patreon. <coughs> Anyways. I don't know, that might be kind of a cool idea. Tell me what you guys think about that. I just kind of had that in the moment. But, um, 
anyways make sure to check us out on instagram check out the merch and link link links for all that excuse me in the description as always okay are you chasing me around now you have long strides of hops here let me see i put my arm up and she flew over to it why don't we get a nice little hop down the hallway for you or for everybody since everybody loves the little hallway hops come on see all the food over there that she spilled and she just took a nice dump. Hey, Maeve, look. Look what I have. Look. <laughs> what are you doing? Look, come get it. Come on. Here you go. Look, here you go. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much, guys, for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.